Welcome to part five. So in part five, I'm gonna talk about the theory to do with the motor loom. Um, this is the more complicated and important part of the circuit in terms of it being technically correct. Everything else is pretty simple. It's sort of on off, whereas this has a uh, stator which has coils and a little switch here that is more complicated than the uh, other parts of the circuit really um, because you're generating the power rather than just supplying it. Generating power is much more complicated than um, just putting positive and negative and on and uh, having a switch there to uh, you know turn it on and off. So um, there are can be there are going to be some complicated parts in this video, but um, uh, at the end I'm going to uh, give you an explanation of how to wire it up when I when I do it anyway. But so if you if you don't understand completely what's happening here, it's not actually that vital as long as you do this correctly um, and follow the uh, information on the internet. It's not particularly dangerous because it's only creating 12 volts. But um, if you get lost, don't feel bad. Uh, this is pretty complicated, really. Yeah, I'm going to make it as simple as possible. But some of the theory that to do with how this works is a bit, um, bit well, it's a bit, it's a bit beyond what a moped is really. If you're the sort of person that just wants to work on a moped, if not calling anyone stupid, but this is the most complicated part of the whole moped by a long way. Okay, aside from the people that design the petrol that it runs on. So. This bolts on, and then there's the flywheel around the outside that spins, and then that generates the voltage within all of these coils. This is your switch. This goes to the blue wire. This part here is the red wire. These both go to your CDI. One is power for your CDI, and then there is a separate power for your CDI that comes from the ignition. <coughs> these three wires are the generating uh, coils, or uh, supply coil, whatever you want to call it, they're the ones that charge your battery, okay? So this and this are these two. The blue one is the one that switches on and off, that's connected to the switch, that turns on and off your um, turns on and off your timing, that's your timing switch, okay? That is your power for your spark, okay? And that is the red wire. These both go to your CDI, these are the ones that go to the CDI, okay? And these are the uh, ones that your uh, coil will not necessarily have if you have a race coil or something that doesn't need to charge your battery, okay? So you have six of them, okay? There are three wires, okay? On a big, big generator that goes in a, you know, like a power station or something, okay? It doesn't work exactly like this. This is designed, okay, I believe so that you can charge your battery from it okay so on a on a car alternator you have what's called a dc regulator this doesn't have that okay and then on a house supply you have what's called ac okay this is still generating ac per se but it's not exactly how it works i know i'm going to show you a diagram to explain it okay so ac is like this okay so when the motor turns, so say this is your motor here, actually I'll draw a picture, okay? So when you have a motor that turns like that, okay? Imagine that's your motor spinning and the power is being generated as it turns and then there is a uh, part, I forget the name of it at the moment, and as it turns, it uh, it, 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 the term I believe is called cutting the magnetic field and as it does this at different angles you get higher voltages and then lower voltages okay and then when it comes around to here and then you're on the opposite connection okay so the the negative wire so the positive will be connected on one side and the negative will be connected on the other or whatever actually the opposite way around really from what I was explaining earlier anyway so as you come around the bottom it goes negative down 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 as it gets further away and cuts it at the highest angle or whatever it is there's a there's an equation you use where you an equation that takes up this whole page and it has angles in it and shit like that and it explains 
how to work out everything from whatever dimensions of motor you have and how fast it spins and shit like that. So as it turns negative to the negative, you get the negative 12, okay? And this basically represents the electrons in the circuit going backwards and forward, forwards, okay? Now alternator in your car works like that, and then they have a DC rectifier which has a bunch of diodes that cut out this part for you, okay? Or potentially that part actually <laughs> they cut out that part <laughs> so that you have negative 12 volts or negative 13 volts or whatever it is all the time okay so that's not the how this works okay so this has three wires okay and each one of these volt uh, these coils is a certain voltage okay and as it turns the flywheel which is around the outside spins you're going to induce your voltage in here and then you're going to do it some of it in here and the opposite over here okay and then when you get to here, you're going to have some here, some here, and the opposite over here. And then it's going to keep going around, and then you're going to induce in here, and then you're going to get some here, some here, or like some here, sorry, some here, and some here, and probably some in there, and then the opposite in here, okay? So, I don't know, know this for a fact, but I'm going to go with, say, they're 12 volts, okay? Each one. 12, 12, or 6, or, you know, 12 there, 12 there, okay? So, so yeah, probably 6. So you're going to get 12 here and 12 here, and you're going to get a different part of here, right? Because this is what this is really. You're going to get a different part of this coil, sorry, a different part of this, uh, what's called a sine wave, and each one at a different uh, point, okay? I should really be pointing down here because that's what we're talking about, okay? Now, the... So this might be 24, right? But you've got negative 12 over here, okay? In the AC part, okay? So if, if you're smart, you will have already worked out what's happening. And if if you're average or whatever like me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through it, okay? So you're never gonna get 12 volts. The peak voltage only exists for a split second, okay? So what you're gonna do is get a combination of all of this as your voltage at any given point minus whatever wire is on the other side, okay, and whatever point that is at. That's why if you ever connect your um, DC voltmeter up to a DC stator, you're going to get, like it's going to flicker between 13.1, 13.7 and so forth, okay. So I, if you put a voltage meter on your battery while the car's running, it goes up, down a little tiny bit, okay. It's pretty balanced. The term is called a balanced load. Excuse me for saying load. There's lots of uh, funny words like that in engineering. But anyway, okay, so you, you, you're looking for whatever voltage, I don't know, 14 volts, okay? So you might get, say, for a second, you might get 12 most of the time, say, on average, which is called, um, I believe the term is called RMS. You know, you're going to get, say you get 10 volts RMS from the combination of that one, 10 volts RMS combination of that one, and then you're going to minus, say, like 10 from the, that one, and then you're going to end up with whatever that is, like 10. So it's probably more like 12. So you're going to get, say, you know, I don't know for exactly what it is. I haven't measured it yet, okay? But this is how this works. So you got 12 volts here, 12 volts here, negative 12, negative 12 makes tw uh, negative 24, and then you're going to minus that one, so you end up with, like, negative 12 at any given point while this spins. So basically, the whole time, you're going to get the desired... DC negative voltage from here okay so these will all connect up to the charging circuit you may need what's called a, uh, a rectifier or something as well just to make sure it's working right um, on my moped it didn't have it from standard and it still worked fine um, I don't know 100% about that okay I'm not actually when I went to school to do electrical engineering, this is the part where I started to fail <laughs> and ended up deciding to become a welder and then decided to become a, uh, a factory paper pusher who sits on the computer and works on Excel all day long. So, <laughs> well, not all day long. I spent a lot of the time drinking coffee and talking. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so the theory is, I'm going to reiterate, reiterate this one more time. You've got add the ones on the same side together RMS and then volt and then sorry and then and then um, and then subtract the other side okay and the total total of that will 
work out to be your DC negative voltage, which will probably be like 13.7, which is generally what those are. Okay, and then these two have a similar effect like that, except what you actually have is when the, the moped gets to the right point, you're inducing 12 in here, and then you get 12 on the other side, which simply turns on the CDI for your timing, and then that way you get a flick of 12 volts to your uh, coil when you actually need it to, okay? There's no sort of balance here, but I am going to measure the voltage coming out of here when I start it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it all up together before I start making up the loom, get a DC voltage meter, which is just a $10 voltage um, meter from the warehouse, and make sure I'm getting 12, okay? Never assume anything. I'm even not assuming this is true, but this is my best theory because I'm looking at what I'm looking at and I understand how these work. So, basically those are your charging circuits for your battery. That one there goes to your stator, sorry, goes to your CDI for power, and then that one there goes to your CDI as a switch that turns on and off the uh, spark plugs, okay? So that was part five. Thanks for look, watching. Um, that's just so that you can have a bit of understanding about how this works because when you look at this it looks stupid and you're like how the fucking hell does that work I don't understand and then you give up because you get despondent so uh, don't feel bad if you don't understand this just follow this and uh, it's easy enough to measure the voltage if you want if you um, don't understand if you're doing what you're doing correctly get a DC voltage meter set it to 12 volts DC put one side into the frame of the moped on the bare metal or onto the negative of your battery and then just test while you're just turning the ignition over okay that's why also why I did the starter circuit first so that I can push the button or connect up the starter and then measure what's coming out okay so hopefully you're going to get you know different voltage like I'm saying here out of here and then that will make sense to me and then over here hopefully we're going to get 12 and 12 at exactly the same time okay uh, there's probably no way to tell. To be fair though, I'm, I'm just going to measure it and see if I get 12 and 12 because I know for a fact that because these line up when that happens that there's not physically possible for them to be 12 and 12 out of time, okay? There's a good thing about electricity is a lot of it's done on paper, with a pen, and then with wires, but at the end of the day it's just like anything else. It's a physical object that exists, it's actually there, and you can use logic from what's actually physically happening to understand what's happening. Uh, I'll tell you a little story. I remember when I was doing my training, I got given a bit of shit by one of the older fellas who'd worked there. You know, he's a sparky, he'd worked in Australia and he'd been there for, you know, he'd, you know, 20, 30 years experience and knew everything. You could walk into a factory and figure out what was wrong with the machine in 30 seconds. Okay. And um, he was always giving me shit going, what's the most important test you can do? And then everyone's, oh, this one, this fancy test with this $500 piece of equipment, blah, blah, blah. And then I was sitting there, I'm getting a headache, I'm stressing, I can't answer the question, I feel like I'm being an idiot. And then he goes, it's the visual test, mate. Does it look broken? You know? And I'm like, oh, he's like, he's like no matter what you'd think, the most important test for an electrician or for anyone working with electrical things is look at it. <laughs> okay, so that lines up with that. It's not physically possible for it to induce current when it's facing in the opposite direction. And I don't care how fancy your test equipment is, if that's to, trying to tell you that that is happening, that's not right really, okay? So, there's a little picture of my little simple drawings. Remember about this part, that's quite interesting really. And also remember not to feel bad and that your moped or motorbike potentially, I'm not trying to tell people I know about motorbikes, but don't feel bad that it's not going to work if you don't completely understand all you've got to know is you've got to put the right voltage to the right place and um, if it says to use other pieces of equipment in your um, wiring diagram whether they come standard learn how to wire those up as well this is only a 50cc moped this is a very small stator putting 12 volts on the air probably isn't going to be a big deal if you're doing this on like a big bike you know or anything like that and it says to use a DC regulator please don't just stick it straight on you know it's there'll, there'll be a reason there'll be other parts that require certain things like you might exactly have to have the right voltage you might not be allowed any negative uh, any positive part as I said what a DC rectifier does is it cuts this part out so it doesn't exist okay so 
that's how that works. Um, so there's no, that, what I'm saying is it means that, the, that there is no AC part of the circuit that you're balancing out without using a rectifier. There is just no, no positive part to the circuit whatsoever. It gets deleted out by the use of diodes, but that's not how this one works, okay? So thanks for watching. Hold par, hold your, hold, uh, hold on for part uh, five, I think, five, six, or six. And that will, video won't be coming for a while because I've actually got to buy this, wait for it to turn up. Anyone who's ever dealt with uh, ordering things from overseas will know how long that can take. And also, um, I'm currently on the hunt for a new tenant. So, um, I will be busy doing things that make money. And YouTube isn't really making money <laughs> for me because I only have a few thousand views. But anyway, I like doing this. So. Uh, if you don't see any videos from me, from me for a while, don't feel like I've disappeared or jumped off a bridge or something. It's just because I'm busy sorting out my life. And I hope this is all interesting and helpful. And feel free to do your own research, look at it. If you think I'm wrong, please feel free to um, do your own research and not tell me in the comments because I don't really want to hear about it because it'll just be uh, someone <laughs> who's missing a piece of information. And also, I don't need to be told I'm wrong on uh, YouTube if this doesn't work, I will be able to figure it out, okay? Thank you. <laughs>